I have tried over 200 luxury beauty products in 2023, and these, my friends, are the best. What's up, friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. I can't believe it. I can't believe I'm filming this video. This is the video that I think about all year long whenever I'm trying really, really good luxury beauty products, the products that I'm the most excited about. They're all going to be wrapped up in this video. I'm going to be going category by category, sharing all of my top absolute favorites from 2023. So if you want to hang out with me, reminisce, take a little trip down memory lane and talk about the best makeup of 2023, then keep watching. All right, party people, let's dive in. We have a lot of categories to cover today. And before I get started, I will just mention that I already posted a fully dedicated video to my favorite eyeshadow palettes of 2023. So if you want to hear specifically about eyeshadow palettes, check that video out after you finish watching this one. I will link it down below. Timestamps are going to be down below, guys, for all the categories that I feature in this video. And with that, let's get started with my favorite foundations from 2023. I have two of them and they are very, very different, but I love both of them so, so much. My favorite one for every day, you all are not going to be surprised by this, is the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Tint. This is my favorite skin tint ever. I absolutely love it. I like the fact that it has a decent amount of coverage. It's not super duper sheer. So I wear this in place of a foundation, even though it is called a skin tint. It does a really good job of covering up my redness while still kind of allowing my skin to peek through a little bit. It is incredibly hydrating and it doesn't dry my skin out throughout the day because there's a lot of other hydrating skin tints and foundations that have come out on the market like the past year or two that look, you know, serumy and juicy, nice and hydrating when they go onto your skin. But then throughout the day, everything just kind of evaporates leaving me as a crusty crab. And I do not get that from the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Tint. This is so, so good. I love the way that it looks on my skin. It's not too gooey or sticky. I don't really find that it transfers at all. You can powder it, but I don't, guys. I love the beautiful hydrated glow that I get from this. I don't feel like my hair sticks to my face or anything. It is an all-around amazing amazing skin tint. I was so excited when she launched this because the other yummy skin products, they didn't really work out for me so well or they weren't really catered to my skin type, I think. So I finally got to participate in the yummy skin from Danessa Myricks, one of my favorite makeup artists. And what makes me even happier, guys, is not only do I like this, but so many of you have commented on my videos and messaged me on Instagram telling me that you got this and that you love it too. So comment down below, guys, if you picked this up and you liked it because we got to share the love. My other favorite foundation, which I mentioned, is a very, very different formula, pretty much on the opposite side of the spectrum, but I still love it, is the Prada Reveal Foundation. I feel like if Prada had the distribution, if they were in more stores, maybe Sephora, maybe Nordstrom, Saks, Neiman's, etc., I feel like more people would be talking about this brand. You really can only get it at like Harrods, Selfridges, or the Prada Beauty website. So I feel like not enough people are talking about this fantastic foundation. This is going to be more full coverage. This is going to be a little bit more matte. You guys recently saw me use this in my Holiday Glam Get Ready With Me video. So if you want to see this in action, definitely, definitely check out that tutorial video. It is my special event foundation. I can wear it for every day if I want to. You know, maybe if I had oilier skin as well, I'd be reaching for this for every day. But this is my like going out. I want to look like a beautiful airbrushed goddess, extremely perfected. It's very glowy. It is matte, but I don't find that it's super drying or crusty on my skin at all. If you are new here, I do have dry skin. So when I'm looking at a matte foundation, I'm always concerned, is it going to dry my skin out? And I don't feel like this one does. This whole line from Prada was such an exciting release for me, pretty much like everything that they released. And the Prada Reveal Foundation was no exception. By the way, if you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Sophia and I love luxury beauty. I upload new videos just like this one every single week. I have reviewed all the products that I'm talking Talking about in this video. I do a lot of new makeup reviews. I do fun and helpful guides, favorites videos. So if you love luxury beauty, hit that subscribe button to join our fam because we would love to have you. And as a quick reminder, friends, I always link all the products that I talk about in every single video, just like this one, in the description box down below. So if you want to shop for any of these products, everything's going to be linked right there. I do use affiliate links. So when you shop through my links, it does go back to supporting my channel this holiday season. And with that, friends, let's get back to the rest of these favorites. 
For concealers, I feel like last year we saw a lot of serum-y, moisturizing, very skincare infused, hydrating types of concealers. But what I've noticed in 2023 is we're starting to see a little bit more of like a soft matte trend. Not so full coverage and matte as maybe a couple years ago where we had that kind of very highly pigmented Instagram style of makeup. Something more of like that cloud skin trend. Almost natural finish, maybe a little bit more perfected, a little bit more glowy. And I feel like that trend has influenced my concealer picks for this year. The first one that I really liked is the reformulated Armani Power Fabric Concealer. This was a holy grail for me. They reformulated it. I was very concerned about it, but honestly, I didn't need to be concerned because this is so beautiful. I did a side-by-side -side with the old formula, and once it goes on the eyes, guys, I really cannot tell the difference. The longevity was exactly the same, so I'm not saying it's exactly the same. It was reformulated, but I really can barely barely tell the difference. I think that this is a really good soft matte concealer for mature skin because it does have kind of a thinner consistency. So you can get something that is, you know, still full coverage and glowy and blurring, but it's not really going to settle into fine lines. It doesn't dry out my under eyes. And you guys know I do have dry skin. So that's always a concern when I'm going in with these types of concealers. That one very, very beautiful. If I feel like I really need to cover something up or I'm feeling a little bit self-conscious about my under eyes, blemishes, any redness or something that I have, I will go in with that. And then another very similar soft matte concealer that I've been loving is the new Makeup by Mario concealer. I looked on Sephora. This concealer does not have good reviews and I don't know why. I think that it's great. It's supposed to be self-setting and I think what that just means is that, you know, it's more of like a soft matte formula. You don't need to layer powders on top of it for it to be very long lasting. This one is pretty similar to the Armani one, except it's just a little bit like thicker and creamier, so I don't need to use as much. It blends out like a dream. This is actually the one that I'm wearing on my under eyes today, and you can see everything is beautifully, beautifully covered, and it has a little bit of illumination in there as well. The Armani one, I think, is a little bit glowier, and then this one is maybe a little bit creamier and thicker. So if you want to kind of really layer it up, if you're one of those people, then go for the Makeup by Mario. Next up, friends, we have my favorite bronzers from this year. And boy, did I try a lot of really good bronzers in 2023. I even did a powder bronzer ranking video, which I will link down below. But I'm just going to cut to the chase, friends. I think that the best bronzers that were launched this year are these ones from NARS. These are the NARS Laguna Talc Free Bronzing Powders. These are so beautiful. The powder is very finely milled. They're very soft and silky. They even have a slight buttery kind of feel to them. They blend across the face so, so beautifully. I really love the shade range as well. I think that kind of really takes them to the top tier for me because there's a lot of other luxury bronzers out there that I love, but unfortunately I just can't recommend them to everybody because there aren't enough shades. So thank you NARS for giving us a pretty good shade range here. This is Laguna 00. This is the lightest shade and I feel like this is a really beautiful neutral bronzer for those of us out there who are fair skin but then they have lots of other shades in the line as well in fact I think they have seven or eight shades in the range so the formula is great the shade range is great these are so so good and then my other favorite powder bronzer that I need to give a shout out to that I really enjoyed in 2023 are of course the Pat McGrath bronzers I have been waiting for these I feel like they're a couple of years overdue but that's okay Pat McGrath I will take it because I love these bronzers. A lot of times I get questions, what is the difference between these and the ones from NARS? The ones from NARS, I feel like they have, they're a little bit more finely milled, so they kind of have a silkier, buttery type of feel and look to the skin. The Pat McGrath ones, I think, have a little bit more glow to them, a little bit more illumination. So if you want more of that glowiness, I would go with the Pat McGrath. My only beef that I have with these is that I do feel like we need a couple more shades, specifically some that are kind of more neutral as opposed to golden. That's kind of the feedback that I've been getting about these. But regardless, the two lightest shades I actually really like. The one that I have right here is the lightest one. This is called Naked Desire. It is a little bit, just a little bit on the warm side, but it's so natural that it works really beautifully on my skin. So if you were looking for something that will kind of warm up your skin, 
but in a very subtle, natural way and you're fair like me, I highly recommend checking these out. In fact, I think my mom even has this one in the second darkest shade and that is her favorite bronzer. Although I have been using mostly powder bronzers this year, I did want to pick one cream bronzer favorite because I did have one that I really enjoyed in 2023 and that is the Jones Road Gel Bronzer. I feel like this one was so underrated. I didn't hear that many people, at least in the luxury beauty space, talking about this one, but it's such a beautiful, hydrating, and very user-friendly cream, or I should say gel bronzer. Let me show you guys what this looks like on the back of my hand. See how creamy and delicious that looks, but because it is a gel formula, it's not super oily like the Jones Road Miracle Bombs, which I don't really enjoy, to be honest with you. This is not like that. This is different, okay? Because when you spread it on, you can really shear it out and then it kind of sets down on your skin. It lasts on your skin all day and you get that kind of beautiful, plump, slightly moisturized type of look without the greasiness. It pairs really, really well with the Shantikai Future Skin Foundation because that is also a gel formula. So a lot of times I will wear both of them together. It's a very similar effect on the skin, except instead of being a foundation, it is basically a bronzer and you can already see this has like kind of started to set on my hand. It is a beautiful bronzer, very user-friendly, very natural looking, and it was my favorite in 2023. I'm pretty sure in my 2022 favorites video last year, I forgot to include favorite face palettes of the year and I was so disappointed. So this year I am remembering to include my favorite face palette. I decided to pick the one that I've used the most, the one that has made it into my everyday makeup bag, and that is friends, the Hourglass Holiday Jellyfish Palette. And no, I didn't get the packaging with the jellyfish because if you don't know, I'm terrified of jellyfish and I didn't want that in my everyday makeup bag. So I decided to get the beautiful, serene, majestic owl. But enough of the packaging. Let's take a look inside of this palette. These are so great for every day. I typically will rotate between a lot of my hourglass palettes, but this one in particular, I do like that it's a little bit more on the neutral side. The bronzer is a beautiful tone sometimes. You know, sometimes they come out a little bit yellow in these palettes in years past, but I really like the tone of this one. As you can tell, I also like to mix the bronzer with the finishing powder, sometimes just to like tone it down for a more natural look. I love that the finishing powders are there so I can use them for blending and maybe setting certain areas of my face. The two blushes are gorgeous. I do wish that one of them was a little bit more neutral. Everything was very pinky in the blush category this year. So, hey, I know it is a trend. And then the best part about this palette, friends, is definitely Definitely this gorgeous, gorgeous highlighter, which does remind me of a beautiful iridescent jellyfish at the bottom of the sea in like the aphotic zone. That's kind of the vibes that this highlighter gives me. So I do get a little bit of jellyfish, okay, in this palette, guys. And it's such a beautiful formula, really, really great for every day. I know I'm always really critical about these palettes in my reviews because they're expensive, but hey, I have really been enjoying it. I cannot deny it is one of the best of the year. I'm sure a lot of you are interested in this next category, and that is blood. 2023 had so many blush launches and I have both powder but also cream and liquid favorites to share with you guys. For the powder category, I really was into the glowy powder blush this year. This year was the year of the RMS Redimension Hydro Powder blushes. I just went full force into these blushes. I love every single color. I own every single color. I've reviewed every single color for you guys. And so many of you have purchased these and told me that you absolutely love them. I feel like there is a color for everybody. And part of that is because they have extended the shade range this year. These are my two favorite new ones that they launched in 2023. Right here, we have Crystal Slip which is a beautiful nude. I know a lot of you guys really like this one. This is the one that I showed you goes in my everyday makeup bag because it really is the perfect like subtle glowy nude from the collection. If you were a little bit intimidated with the colors that they had previously because they know they were a little bit bright and punchy, Crystal Slipper was the answer to your prayers. And then the other one that I have here is called Cure Royale. And this is such a beautiful tone of mauve, I guess you could call it. It's not 
pink, it's not purple, it's not mauve. And when you sheer it out, it is such a beautiful romantic flush. These are glowy. They give a beautiful pop on the cheeks that isn't chunky glitter or anything like that. I absolutely love this formula. These have quickly become probably my favorite blushes in my collection because they're a little bit more unique, but they still are good for every day. And then of course, friends, this wouldn't be the 2023 favorites video without the beautiful Chanel LeBlanc blush that launched this year. This one was called Pastel Fuchsia and everybody went crazy over this blush. Everybody wanted it. It sold out. I really wish this was permanent because I think it is so stunning. Probably one of the most beautiful Chanel products that I've purchased to date. I think that it is just so fun and poppy and colorful and scrumptious. I love the tweed pattern on it. Like what isn't to love? I love the fact that they didn't just launch a plain old pink blush like everybody else. They gave us this slight multi-dimensional, ultra feminine, shiny, kind of like a blush topper. This is more shimmery than the RMS ones. It's also more shimmery than the ones in the Le Beige collection that I just reviewed for you guys. I was getting a lot of questions about that. This is more shimmery than all of it, guys, okay? Because it's a little bit more of a blush topper slash highlighter, but hey, it goes into the blush category for 2023. Now for liquid blushes, I was so late to the game on this one. So, so late to the game, but 2023 was the year that I fell in love with the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Liquid Blushes. I know, why didn't I try these earlier? You all told me they were good and for some reason I still didn't run out and get them. Maybe I thought that they were overhyped. I don't know guys, I try so much makeup here on this channel and I really do think that these are some of the best liquid slash cream blushes on the market. I love the fact that she's got the dewy finish and the matte finish. She has so many beautiful colors to choose from as well. And the price point is also pretty good. She came out with some new shades this year. And this is the one that is my favorite. I think this is the one that really made me fall in love with her blushes. This is also the one that I'm wearing on my cheeks today. It is called Virtue. It is a beautiful kind of neutral peachy toned blush. It's really great for every day. It's the kind of thing you could put in your everyday makeup bag. If someone were to purchase one of the blushes and maybe they didn't have one and they wanted, you know, kind of like a safe everyday color, this would probably be the one that I would recommend to them. If you have a very light skin tone, you want something very light. The shade Hope is also good. It's a little bit lighter than this one and a little bit pinker. But if you're like me and you like something a little bit warmer, warmer, toastier. This is going to be your color. It is called Virtue. It is so, so pretty. Another favorite that I think is worth it, even though it is a little bit more of a higher price point, are the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Beauty Blush Wands. Now, the name is very deceiving, okay? Because they're called the Matte Beauty Blush Wands. They're not matte, guys, okay? They just don't have any shimmer. There's no glitter or shine to these. There's just beautiful, hydrating, dewy color that makes your cheeks look so gorgeous and romantic and flush, but also moisturized at the same time. So they don't have a matte finish like the matte formulation from Rare Beauty. These look more like the dewy finish of the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Liquid Blushes. The reason why I really like these is because you just cannot beat the longevity of these. These are a little bit, I don't want to say necessarily higher quality because you can get the same effect from the Rare Beauty ones, but the longevity of these is so, so good. These are my two favorite shades. We have the pillow talk shade. We'll do a little swatch right here. We have pillow talk, which is kind of just, you know, good and neutral for every day. And then if you want something that's a little bit more unique, we also have the Dream Pop. I know it looks like it's going to be a little bit bright, but it looks so beautiful when you share it out on the cheeks. This one is great for year round, works for the summer, works for the fall and winter. So I really like these as well. And in fact, I want to use these a little more. So I'm going to pop these in my everyday makeup bag so I can get some use out of them over the next couple of weeks. And then my last blush favorite from this year are the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Cream Blushes. I think that these are great if you want something that is very long lasting and also has a little bit more of like a mattified look to the skin. So if you are kind of afraid of cream blush because maybe you have oilier skin or you feel like it's not going to last or you feel like it's going to make you look a little bit too shiny and dewy. If you don't enjoy that type of aesthetic, you want something that almost looks a little bit more like a powder blush. I would go with these. These have the same sort of ingredients and technology as the Yummy Skin Balm that has like the Upsolite in it, which 
which kind of controls sebum production. So these are such a go-to for me in the summer. If I feel like I'm going to be a little bit sweaty and I need something that's going to last, these are just perfect. And I love the beautiful, juicy, fun shades that she launched in these. This one is called Prima Donna. It is a gorgeous bright pink. You only need a very little amount, obviously, because it's very, very bright. And then this one that I have right here is called Jubilee. And this is a gorgeous terracotta, something a little bit toasty for the summertime. Now for highlighters, I decided to pick two that were kind of more basic, more everyday, something that you're going to get a lot of use out of. And then I also picked two that you certainly could use every day, but they're just a little bit more novel, something a little bit more interesting and collectible. Starting off with more basic and everyday, I've really been enjoying the new one from RMS. This is in Prosecco Fizz. It's basically the same formula as the blushes, except obviously it's more glowy. It's a highlighter. This is just your good old basic gold. It's a beautiful, beautiful shimmering gold that just kind of melts into my skin tone. I think the formula is great because as you can see, it doesn't have any harsh glitter particles, but it still gives a lot of beautiful shine. And the color of this, I think in particular, works really well with my skin tone. So if we are shade twins, I highly recommend this, but I do think that this shade works for a lot of skin tones as well. If you're looking for something a little bit more subtle, my other favorite has been the Chantecaille Real Glow, and this is in the shade Stella. Technically, this is a re-promote. This came out like a couple of years ago as a part of the, I think it was like the Positano collection. They had it in another palette, but that's okay. Whatever, friends. It's a re-promote. It came out this year, and it came out in this really cool Cosmos packaging, which I have enjoyed while using it. I'll swatch this for you guys right here. See how that one, it is a very similar tone to the RMS, maybe a little bit warmer, but it's just a little bit more subtle. So if you like more of that subtle makeup, something slightly more natural, I really think you're going to enjoy this one from Chantecaille. And then for my more interesting novel highlighters, I picked two limited edition ones. One that is more summertime vibes and the other one is a little bit more wintry and frosty. The summertime one is from the Dior de Riviera collection from this past summer. This one is called Coral Cruise. And you guys know I love the Dior Forever Luminizers, but I particularly love this one because hopefully you guys can see, I'll swatch it for you on my hand. This one is very multi-dimensional. It's basically a mixture of both gold and coral, and it just melts into the skin so beautifully, gives that gorgeous, gorgeous gleam. You can use this as an eyeshadow as well. We get a lot of really beautiful highlighters from this line, but we don't normally get something multi-dimensional, sort of borderline duochrome like this one. I love to pair this with a bright coral blush, some bronzer, Mm, it's so good. I absolutely love that one. It was limited edition, so if I can still find it, I will link it down below for you guys. But it's probably one of my favorite highlighters in my entire collection. And then my other favorite here, which is more wintertime vibes, as I mentioned, this is the Clay de Peau Luminizer from their holiday collection. Before I swatch the highlighter though, can we just take a look at the gorgeous packaging? I know I've gushed about this enough this year, but the packaging is really like the icing on the cake for this one. The highlighter is beautiful, multi-dimensional, just like the Dior one, but it is more of a frosty vibe. So you can see every little color in there, but it all kind of blends together into this really sweet iridescent frostiness. And this is going to be a little bit more for fair skin tones, I know. And it is a little bit frosty, so not everybody is going to like that, but I absolutely love it. I feel like it's very unique. I love the packaging. The formula is gorgeous, not chunky, not glittery, just super smooth and luminizing. Moving along, friends, I want to talk about what is on my eyes today. I already posted that favorite eyeshadow palettes video, so we're not going to talk about eyeshadow palettes today, but I do want to give a shout out to my favorite eyeshadow singles from this year year and that is the Victoria Beckham eyewear eyeshadow sticks. These really brought about a newfound love for single eyeshadows for me. I love these sticks. They're very creamy. They go onto the lids super smoothly. I love the way that they blend out and most importantly they last all 
day. Obviously as well, the packaging is really beautiful. It's Victoria Beckham Beauty. The shades that she releases are always so, so sophisticated. I used all of the neutral shades in the collection for this look today. So I have Trench, Caramel, and Oyster. I went in with Trench all over the lid. This is the perfect base shade. If you need something that kind of gives you that no makeup makeup type of look and just covers up any imperfections, veins, redness, etc., that you have on your lids, Trench is a really good go-to. Then I use the Caramel shade just to add like a little bit of definition, a little bit of shimmer on the lid. And then finally, one of my favorite ones that I recommend to all of you is Oyster because this is not only a good one and done, but it's also really good for kind of brightening things up on the inner corner, the center of the eye. It is the perfect companion shade to all of the other shades that she has in her line. I can't wait for her to come out with new shades. As soon as she does, I'm definitely going to buy them because these are definitely a favorite. I also chose one eyeliner favorite and one mascara favorite for 2023. I decided to choose just one of each because these are the ones that really stood out to me. On the eyeliner side, you guys already know I love the Dior Dior Show on stage crayons. I have the shade brown that I used on my eyes today. These are not the most groundbreaking colors, but hey, they are basic and classic and good for every day. This is what I use in my everyday makeup bag. The formula is great because it's very easy to work with. It's blendable, but it's not so creamy that it just kind of blends away into nothingness. I have enough control over the formula where I can get exactly the look that I need. I can do a more graphic wing. I could do more of a smudgy look. And it also does come with a little smudger on the one end. So that makes it really easy. You don't have to reach for another tool or brush or sponge tip or anything like that. And this lasts all day. It's not going to smudge or fade. So if you really need that lasting power, or maybe you kind of end up with raccoon eyes by the end of the day, have no fear because the Dior Show on stage crayon has got you, my friend. And then for mascara, the best one that I tried this year, the best new mascara at least, is the Benefit Fan Fest. You guys have heard me talk about this so many times. I saw so many advertisements for this around Paris. I was like, okay, we get it, the Benefit Fan Fest. But hey, listen, it is a really good mascara. I love the shape of the wand. This is my favorite type of shape because it's a little bit thinner, longer, and tapered. So it gives me a lot of control to get every single lash you end up with these beautiful, long, separated, fluttery lashes. And most importantly, friends, it lasts really long. That's the biggest thing that I look for in my mascaras. I need them to last all day. I really hate it when my mascara transfers up here because my lashes are quite long. It really irritates me and then it smudges and then I gotta fix it. And I just don't really like that, okay? So this is very good longevity. It's not gonna flake on you. We've made it to the lip product section of this video, friends. And this category did did not disappoint in 2023. We had so many good lip products that were launched this year. And I'm gonna show you guys a couple of my favorites in all different formulations from matte to satin to glossy, starting off with what is on my lips today. And that is the Prada Hyper Matte Lipstick. This is in the shade Fauve. I'll list all the shades in the description box so that you don't have to remember them. Everything about this line just speaks luxury to me. I love the packaging that they chose. It's very luxe, weighty, very sleek and modern. I like the shades that they picked. They have some really good neutrals. They have some, you know, iconic reds. They have some bright, fun pops of color, really good color range. And then I also really like the formula. That's what really sells this to me because it's very creamy and easy to apply, very rich, but it has this really unique setting capability where after a couple of minutes, the color really sets down and you're kind of locked and loaded. And in a way or in a texture that is unlike any other matte lipstick that I have in my collection, it almost feels a little bit more similar to a liquid lipstick, except more comfortable on the lips. I know a lot of you guys are looking for things that are a little bit more transfer proof, but aren't drying. I think that these are really good because when I sort of like rub my lips together and feel them, they have this really unique, perfected, silky feel that I don't know, I don't get that from other matte lipsticks. Most of the time they just kind of like gently set down and maybe throughout the day they get a little bit dry and I have to reapply. The texture of this I don't know. It just feels very, very unique and gives this perfect look to the lips. And like I said about the foundation, if they just sold this brand at more stores, these would be flying off the shelves. Speaking of liquid lipsticks, I think some of the best ones on the market are these ones from Lisa Eldridge, the Velveteen Lip Color. These
these are stunning. If someone was to ask me, you know, what liquid lipstick should I buy? There's only going to be a couple of brands that I recommend because a lot of them are very drying on the lips. Let's be real. That's kind of what liquid lipsticks are like. They usually have a lot of alcohol in the formulation. These are really, really good. Like the Prada Beauty ones, they give that super perfected look to the lips. I'm going to show you the shade that I have right here, which is called Rain. Oh my goodness. How romantic is this shade? This with just a very simple eye is absolutely stunning. She has a lot of other, you know, nudes and other shades in the collection as well. But this is the one that I picked out that I think is so, so stunning. If you haven't tried these, if you, you know, want a liquid lipstick, if you're in the market for a liquid lipstick that is transfer proof, but not drying, I really highly recommend that you check out the Lisa Eldridge Velveteen liquid lipsticks. Moving into more of like a cream lipstick category, something a little bit more moisturizing and less matte than let's say the Prada Beauty or the Lisa Eldridge Velveteen lip color. I've really been enjoying the RMS Legendary Serum lipsticks. These are going to be so, so good if you want that full opacity and richness that you get from a matte lipstick, but you just don't like the feeling of your lipstick sort of setting down. You like to feel it remain creamy on your lips. You enjoy that moisturizing feeling. These are going to be great for you. I'll do a quick little swatch right here. This is the shade Audrey. It is one of my favorites. It's kind of like a subtle muted cherry red. Absolutely gorgeous. You can see just how pigmented that is, but it has a gorgeous creaminess to it. I know that these are called the serum lipsticks. I would not call them that. It doesn't make any sense. Serum lipstick makes it sound like these are going to be kind of like sheer, almost like a lip oil or something like that. That is not what these are. These are basically just a good go-to creamy hydrating lipstick. They have pretty good longevity, not as much as like a liquid lipstick, obviously, and they're not going to be transfer proof. But hey, if you want that beautiful, rich look across your lips and you want it to be extra comfortable and good for every day, then these are going to be great. And I also did a review of these guys swatching and trying on every single shade. So if you want a little bit of a shopping guide, you can check that out on my channel page. Definitely one of the most special lipstick releases of this year was the one from the Guerlain Spring Collection that came alongside this beautiful cherry blossom themed case. This was just such a special duo and I love using not only the gorgeous case but also the beautiful rosy bloom color. Everybody went so crazy over this color and I definitely understand it's a really beautiful petal pink. It's in the satin formula. They are coming out with another case and lipstick for this upcoming spring. They're a little bit different but I'm hoping they're just as pretty so that if you missed out on this one you could indulge in the new release that is coming up. I really love this color. Usually I don't pick out colors like this but this really got me into more of like that subtle pink lipstick in 2023. Such a beautiful collector's item. I love the cases that Guerlain do as a part of these seasonal collections because even after I use up the lipstick or if it expires or something like that I can still enjoy this gorgeous gorgeous case for years to come. Staying on the theme of the more satin hydrating kind of sheer formulas a recent favorite of mine have also been these new Hermes lipstick. These are from the fall collection. They are limited edition. You can still get them but they're not going to be around for that much longer friends so if you're interested I suggest picking them up pretty soon. I love the cool ombre effect that they did as a part of this limited edition line. I know it's not for everybody but I particularly think it's quite cool. I love the weightiness. It's super luxe. You got the magnetized cap. I also really like that you got this beautiful gold Hermes emblem on the cap. And when this formula was first released, I think that the colors they did were kind of like lighter, more sheer. It didn't really seem worth it to me. It was the kind of colors that I felt wouldn't really show up on my tone of lips. Then they came out with these shades and I was hooked. Take a look at the two that I have right here. I have Rouge Bruni and Rouge Abyss. And these just look so gorgeous and hydrating and romantic on the lips. This one has more of like a strawberry tone. And this one is a little bit more purpley. I'll list the shade names in the description box. But these are the kinds of things that I toss in my purse if I'm doing a very simple makeup look and I just need like an instant little burst of color. It's an instant look, very easy to do. You don't even need a mirror to apply these because it's more of like that glossy sheer formula, but you still get some really beautiful pigmentation. They're absolutely gorgeous. And these kind of got me back into like the Hermes lipstick game because now I'm thinking, mm, what other shades do I want? I'm excited to see what they do come springtime. One of my favorite moisturizing lipstick formulas is this one from Chanel. These are called the Chanel 
Chanel Rouge Cocoa Bloom lipsticks. And I specifically like these because I feel like it's a good balance between rich pigmentation, but also moisture. You get a really gorgeous, glossy, plump look to the lips, but you don't sacrifice having a beautiful color. It does feel more like a lipstick than a lip balm. And I really like the shades that they launched for the fall collection this year. You still can get these. I've seen them in store at least. So I'll link these down below and I'll actually, let's swatch them on my hand real quick here. The first one is called Ease. It is a gorgeous warm nude. This is the one that I'll just kind of pop in my purse for every day. See how you get decent pigmentation, but some really beautiful shine. The other one that I really like is this one, which is called Wild. And this is a gorgeous black cherry to the lips. I love to wear this one with more of just like a simple eye, maybe a similar tone on the cheeks. These just scream fall and winter to me. I've been wearing them all season. And yeah, I can't recommend them enough. These are definitely some of my most worn lipsticks of 2023. And then finally, friends, we got to talk about my favorite lip glosses of 2023. And I got to give a shout out to one of my favorite brands, which is Dior. I absolutely love the new Dior fall winter lip maximizers. We have holographic silver and pure copper, and they are both the perfect complements to an everyday look. I always have these in my handbags. The holographic silver, I know it's not super pigmented. It's more of like a clear and then it's all about the shimmer that gorgeous holographic shimmer it doesn't look crazy it just makes the lips look super plump and shiny and you get a little bit of sparkle in there as well and then the pure copper i love to wear this with more of my neutral looks you guys know i love warm tones for a bronzy look for like a gold holiday look that goes really well with this as well these are just both so so good and the colors are a little bit basic but that's good because it goes with all of my makeup looks looks. Are you still with me, friends? We are nearing the end of this favorites video, but I do have just a couple of products left that I want to show you guys in the skincare and also the brushes and tools category. Don't worry, I narrowed it down to the best of the best. And I want to kick things off by giving a shout out to the cleanser from Lisa Eldridge. I think this is such a good face cleanser. It's a little bit pricey. I normally don't spend this much on a face cleanser. You guys know I have kind of a mixture of like drugstore, stuff from my dermatologist, and a couple of high-end things in my skincare routine but I really enjoy this. I really think that this is worth it and I absolutely will purchase it again once I use it up. A little bit goes a long way. I like the fact that it has kind of like a more oily texture so that I can massage my face, really work it in. You can also wear it as a really quick two minute mask in or outside of the shower. It sort of melts away any extra traces of makeup that I might have after I go in with my oil cleanser, kind of like my makeup removing step. It's beautiful for all of that, but what I really like about this is that after you wash it off your face, it leaves behind like these skin softeners. It's very hard to describe because I don't have anything like that in my collection. It leaves behind skincare that leaves your skin just baby, baby soft, and it does not irritate my skin. I've never broken out from it. I love this for all year round, but specifically now in the winter, I've really, really been enjoying it. So yes, it was a little bit expensive for a cleanser, at least by my standards, but I really do think it is worth it. So I wanted to give her a shout out because she just launched her skincare this year. So great job, Lisa Eldridge. And then the other skincare item that I have to share with you guys today is of course the RMS Supernatural Radiant Serum. I've talked about this this so much on my channel. This one was gifted to me by RMS, but then I also purchased the medium shade myself. I use them all the time. I like to use this not only as a sunscreen, but also as a primer for under my makeup. It gives me a beautiful hydrated glow. I love the blurring properties that I get from this. It's more opaque than other primers. A lot of you guys have asked me, you know, how does this compare to the Victoria Beckham or the new Chanel Le Beige primers? This is more pigmented. It's a little bit thicker and more opaque. So if you really want something that's going to be noticeable, I would go with this one. A lot of the other primers out there, they're more about like the hydrating abilities and just a little bit of like shimmer and sparkle. I like that this one is very noticeable and I also can use it as kind of like a mixing agent to blend along with my foundations if I want to give a little bit more of like a glowy boost or if I want to maybe lighten up or darken up a shade that is, you know, 
doesn't quite match me for that particular season. I'm absolutely obsessed with these. I use them all the time and a lot of you guys have purchased them as well and you tell me that you like them and that makes me so, so happy. And then for my very last category, friends, I decided that given how many brush reviews I do here on this channel and the joy that I get from high quality makeup brushes, it was only fitting to include my favorite releases from this year. And I gotta hand it to Sonia G because she really captures my heart with her brush releases. My first favorite I want to share is the new Fundamental Eye series from Sonia G. I already did a full, you know, review and comparison video with all of the new brushes that have come out over the past couple weeks. I can link it down below if you want to see like more in-depth thoughts about these. But just to summarize, guys, these are expensive, but man, they are top-notch. They are so soft. The shapes are spot on. This is what I would design if I were to design a Fundamental Eye set. It's almost like she read my mind about every single brush that I would include. The quality is beautiful. I love the hand carved wooden handles. There just isn't a single thing that I don't like about these. It's so nice when you invest in something and it turns out to be really, really good. Something that you can use every day and that you enjoy using every day. It's just an absolutely, absolutely delightful set. I highly recommend and check out that video if you want my recommendations for which of the brushes, like single brushes, I would recommend just given your eye shape and you know, the type of makeup that you like to do on a regular basis. My other favorite, and this is more of like a face brush, is the Sonia G Sheer Buffer. I think this is a brilliant brush because I know it's supposed to be for creams and liquids and that's what a lot of you use it for, but I like to use it for powders as well. This is such a great do everything brush and it's perfect for those of us out there that like a more natural makeup application, which if you like luxury makeup, that probably is a little bit more your vibe. It has this really cool sort of stippling shape where some of the bristles are shorter and then these ones on the top are longer so you get a beautiful natural airbrush finish and like I said you can use it for creams you can use it for powders I really want to buy a second one of these so I can do one for creams and liquids and one for powders so I don't have to wash it all the time it definitely has become one of my favorite Sonia G face brushes just because how multi-purpose and unique it is and it has been such a treat to use in 2023 and then finally okay I wanted to pick one more face brush Brush, something that was a little bit more of like a collector's item, something that I just really enjoy using whenever I pick it up. It is this gorgeous maquillé brush from iHodo. I picked this up from Food A Beauty. I will link it down below. It doesn't come in stock very often. You kind of have to wait for one to pop up on Food A Beauty. So whenever it comes back in stock, guys, I will let you know as soon as I see it on my Instagram stories. But what really takes my breath away for this brush is not just the amazing soft, delicious, gentle squirrel hair bristles, but it is the hand painted lacquerware on the handle. It just takes my breath away. I think it's so, so gorgeous. This really is artisanship at its finest. It is kind of a collector's item for me, but I do use it. I love picking it up and using this for bronzer on my face. It is just an absolute treat. Woo, it is getting dark outside. So I think that means it's time to wrap up this favorites video. If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. But most importantly, friends, now it is your turn. Sound off in the comments down below and let me know what were your favorites of 2023. I know that you had some, so please tell me what really stood out to you. What have been some of the most used products in your makeup bag this year? And if you have made it through this very long video and you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button to join our fam or head on over to my channel page to watch more videos just like this one. And with that, friends, I hope that you see some beauty in your day and I will see you in my next one. Happy holidays.